Suddenly I got this feeling that it might not be the best idea to go outside. Fuck it. Go outside. The thing was nowhere to be seen. Just as I was turning around, I took a look at the roof. There it was. It was close to a corner, about to turn. It looked like an albino male with really long limbs. He had fingers instead of toes, and all twenty of them were elongated. He was facing away from me. Suddenly, the head swiveled 180 degrees and stared at me. I started choking up as if suffocated. It was hard to breathe. The thing opened its mouth, slowly and deliberately. I thought it was going to devour me when its tongue snaked out. On the tip of its tongue was my face, like a tumor. Eyes closed, lips upturned into some psycho smile. There's a legend somewhere that when you see a doppelganger, you die. I thought of that legend, but then the creature rounded the corner and it was gone. I lost it and followed, vision hazy. My heartbeat suddenly seemed ear-splitting to me. I was stumbling because my legs seemed unable to coordinate. Suddenly I stumbled forward and toppled down. Once I lay there, face down in the grass, my body just seemed to shut down. I couldn't move. I couldn't even turn my head. There was something dripping on my back. My eyelids seemed heavy and started closing of their own accord. I saw white feet with long fingers for toes step into view. When my eyes opened, Celeste was shaking me. She was on the brink of tears and her voice was cracking. Get up! Get up! Get up! That bastard was in your skin! My head hurt. I was about to ask her what happened when she started pulling me backwards toward the door. We toppled out and stumbled towards Darren's car, which was parked in a different location from what I remembered. I was glad to be alive. The mist had stopped completely. Celeste was downright crying now. She pushed me into the back seat. That's when I noticed. I was wearing different clothes from when I lost consciousness. Michael was there, huddled up and face buried in his knees. Some clothes stained with blood were beside him. They were mine. Darren immediately stepped on the pedal, but nothing happened. He swore and did it again. I noticed that Celeste was armed with a shotgun from the cabin. I asked them what was going on. The Thing joined us. He looked like you. We got out of the house and found the car. We were halfway down the road and then Michael started screaming. I looked at Michael. He had a glazed over look in his eyes. The Thing burst out of your clothes and jumped out of the car. Michael had the gun. He was firing out the window when we saw the thing run all the way back to the house at the frickin' speed of light. It was... in my skin? Yeah. I looked down at myself. I wondered if I had been possessed or if worse the thing had cut off my skin and wore it as a coat. I shuddered at the thought of something crawling around in my skin. I asked Michael if he was all right. The 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 thing talk, talked to me. I asked about what. He didn't respond. I realized he was sobbing. The car jolted into motion. Darren fist pumped as the car started accelerating. I turned back towards the cabin and saw the albino thing standing on the roof of the house, watching us. I shuddered and turned back. Celeste screamed. The thing was in front of the car, on the windshield. It opens its mouth and my tongue face slithered out. Celeste fired the shotgun. That's a really bad idea in the car. The glass shattered and it was thrown backwards. Darren shrieked as I saw blood coming from his face. 
Something pierced my face and I realized it was glass. The car skidded to a stop. The car doors opened, without any discernible reason, and I fell out. The thing lay directly across from me, my eyes closed as if it was sleeping. I wished I could close my eyes. Its mouth hung open and I saw myself again emerging. I didn't move or say anything because I couldn't. My face looked at me and started to talk. I love you. I love you. I love you. I want to be you. It repeated it over and over again. It was coming close to me. I wondered if it was going to bite me again. That's not what it said. The thing's eyes shot open and I realized it was going to kiss me. I managed to regain some control and instinctively twisted back from it. I guess that was what saved me. There was a sound like an explosion and blood spouted from the thing. Celeste was standing over it. Her face and body were bleeding as she had a spaced out look, psychopathic look in her eyes. She had just fired the shotgun. My face looked directly at me. I am you, it whispered. She fired again and I saw my own face begin rotting to nothing more than a skeleton in front of me. The thing's head flowered open. That's the best word I can find to describe it. Its head kind of split and split again, peeling away. I saw faces, lots of them, all on the inside of its head. I saw, I think I saw a Celeste and a Michael. They were whispering something unintelligible. In the center, where the brain should be, there was a single red cat-like eye that was rotating in its socket. It was producing the mechanical droning sound. Celeste fired one last time. The thing sort of withered away, becoming wrinkled and smaller and rotten, until it just disappeared. Celeste dropped the shotgun. I started twitching and spasming as control of my body returned to me. Eventually, I stood up. We got into the car silently. Darren was bleeding too, but no one said anything. We drove back to the city in silence. We explained away the damaged car as being attacked by some crazy thieves. We had ourselves patched up. Michael was still in a shock-like state. I hear he was like that for a while. When I asked him what he thought of the incident later, he denied it ever happened, with compelling conviction. His eyes looked dead, and he had lost a lot of weight. I don't know if he forced himself not to remember, or if he genuinely knows nothing of it. I know what I saw, but I can't remember the exact place. It's been two months now. We still refrain from talking about it. If you were expecting some huge twist or something, you'll be disappointed. I still don't know what we met out there. I don't want to know, actually. I still have nightmares about my own face shouting, I am you. One thing I do know, though, I am never going camping ever again. The good ending, I would assume. Well, that was really good. I, I dig it. I, I like that a lot. For a short campy game, you know, it wasn't too campy and it wasn't too bad either. Well, I guess uh, I just want to thank you guys for watching. It's uh, something a little bit different. Just to to spice it up, mix it up a bit. It's been a little while since I've done one of these. So, uh, thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.